I want you to do me a huge favor and never make this one financial mistake. This is something I'm very passionate about and it just so happens that I haven't gone over this on this channel as much as I wanted to, mainly because it's hard for me to find the words to describe a struggle sometimes, you know? And I think it's something we all have trouble explaining, which is why this issue hasn't stopped. In fact, it continues to grow on a daily basis. That problem starts with comparison and I call it the comparison trap. It's a lot deeper than your average ordinary comparison when you're comparing looks, money, cars, houses, and clothes when it comes to other people. Sure, these are all things I'm sure you've compared yourself to someone else with in the past, but honestly, I think that's kind of normal. As humans, we're naturally competitive, and even though this is normal, it can get pretty bad. And as a very competitive person myself, I can tell you that the danger in all of this is tying your self-worth with your ability to one-up someone else. Because when you're not successful, you fall into this void of feeling like you're not enough, and you start to feel like you're so behind in life. And I'll tell you a quick story about the time when I did this, and then you'll clearly see why this is the one money mistake to never make. And if you have made this mistake before, you'll definitely know not to make it again. I remember this one time at work, there was this guy and he just kept getting promoted. Young guy about 10 years older than I was, and I could not figure out how he kept progressing in this harsh environment that we worked in. And just for reference, we were both first level managers, which basically meant we were the eyes and ears for any and everything that went on in the factory every day. Now that you have that point of reference, this dude was basically invincible. It was like there was no problem that he never saw before. He was assertive, quick-witted, and he always had a plan for the worst of circumstances. It was almost like he knew exactly what was going to happen before it happened. As a result, he kept getting promoted, and he actually started a few months after I did, and he was already promoted twice before I was even considered once for a promotion. I was about 22, 23 years old at the time, and I was fired up and ready to go too. I was like, hey, when's my turn? And since he was my peer who worked side by side with me every day, I tried to function at his level, which was straight up impossible. So it made me start to feel really inadequate about myself to the point where I started second guessing my career choice altogether. See, my competitive nature did something to my mindset. I tried to function on a level I wasn't ready for, and when I came up short, I overextended myself and got absolutely nowhere. That's exactly what we do with our money. See, you probably forgot this video was about money. Let me flip the script on you real quick. This is exactly how we treat our money, and I've seen this so many times, it makes me sick. This is beyond comparing how many possessions you have. This is the mistake that creates the trend of keeping up with your neighbors and trying to one-up somebody all the time. This is when you count somebody's pockets based on what they do, what accomplishments they've achieved, where they went to school, and what title they have. This is by far the most repulsive, pretentious behavior I've ever seen. And I have a very strong opinion on this stuff because I've seen my own friends and family get affected by this. And it leads to the worst type of comparison trap that lasts for several generations and it keeps your pockets small. Bro, you wanna have them deep pockets, not small pockets. So let me break this down for you real quick. There's three things that happen that eventually lead to financial devastation on a global level and honestly, it makes me wanna throw my computer. But my computer was about expensive low key, so that would be a financial mistake on my part which would make me a hypocrite. <sighs> anyway, the first one is what we've already started talking about, comparison. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you this level of comparison as I've experienced it and all I want you to do is comment down below if you've had a similar experience. So growing up, I witnessed three comparisons that directly correlate with money and they're all extremely sickening so I'll try not to mean mug this camera when I talk about these. So first, there's the comparison of titles. That's when there's an overwhelming pressure coming from parents, teachers, and friends and that pressure is to be doing something that is perceived to make you a lot of money with a complete lack of regard when it comes to happiness, fulfillment, or even what to do with the money once you get it. It starts off with a seemingly harmless question. How are you doing in school? And that's a question you should get as you progress throughout grade school and even once you go beyond that. But even though I think that question is important to a degree, something that I had to learn the hard way growing up is that school doesn't teach a lot of important life skills that you're going to need, especially when it comes to money and navigating in this world in our early 20s. And unfortunately, that question involves into where do you work? What do you do? Where did you go to school? What did you study? And those questions really hit a nerve with me because it places an overwhelming importance around things that one, don't matter as much as we think they do. And two, they don't tell you how much money a person makes. And here's a big thing you'll see throughout this video. People closest to you or even strangers you meet on the plane or in the store are gonna ask you these types of questions as a way to pretty much measure your success. And frankly, they ask these questions as a way to count your pockets. You know what I'm saying, bro? If you tell them something like, yeah, I work at Walmart as a manager and I have an associate's degree in business, you're going to get a way different reaction than if you said, I'm a lawyer. First of all, when you tell them you're a lawyer, that's all they needed to hear. They don't care where you work, where you got your degree from, or nothing. Because they already consider you a success and they've already started counting your pockets. 
Now let's consider that the Walmart manager and the attorney are the same exact age. The Walmart manager makes $72,000 a year and the lawyer makes $68,000 a year. The Walmart manager has no debt and they've held their position for the last three years. The attorney on the other hand is fresh out of law school and they have a whopping $150,000 of debt to pay off. So who's wealthier? The Walmart manager. Yeah, everyone sleeps on the Walmart manager because it doesn't sound as fancy as practicing law. The problem with this is, if we consider these two people are cousins, one might compare themselves to the other, especially if they're basing their success on their titles. And what I'm about to say next is really going to hit you. Family members want you to say stuff like, yeah, I'm in medical school or I'm about to graduate from law school because they can then go to their friends, acquaintances, and pretty much everybody that has a pulse and say, hey, my son's a lawyer. My daughter's a doctor because it makes them look good. And I know that not all parents are like that, but I'm just telling you what I've seen in my life. Those titles are automatically thought to be tied and associated with money. So when compared to someone with a trade or anyone who has a pretty good job that pays well without the fancy title, the family gravitates towards the one with the title. What this does is it makes people like you and I compare themselves to friends and family. And something I realized I was doing in the example I just gave you a few minutes ago is this. What this does is it makes people like you and I compare themselves to friends and family. And what I realized I was doing in the example I gave you a few minutes ago is this. I was putting so much pressure on myself and I was comparing myself to someone else's strengths to the point where I forgot about what I could do. And that really hits me because the questions and expectations that friends, family, society has for us gives us a comparison mentality in my opinion. It leads to unhealthy habits like trying to be the person you look up to. I had to learn that myself. I can never be that guy who was getting promoted every two seconds. I could only learn from him and figure out a way to take what I learned, make it my own and become the best I could possibly be within my career. And now I'm in a place where I coach and develop people within their careers. So I just want you to know this. You can never be someone else. You have to become the best version of yourself. That's the only way. Trying to live up to someone else's accomplishments will drive you insane. I went to college with so many kids who tried to live up to their parents' expectations just because their mom was a dentist or their dad was the head engineer at one of the top companies in the world. The kids I went to school with felt like they just had to live up to that potential. So it makes them do what I did and compare themselves to someone else's strengths. And unfortunately, this leads to them choosing a college major that they're not even passionate about. And they know deep down this is the last thing they want to be doing, but they go for it anyways and it's all to get that validation from everyone else. That's dangerous and it's dangerous because when you place someone else's approval of your life over everything else, you lose. What I've seen a lot of people do is switch their college majors over and over again because they didn't truly know what they wanted to do. And once they woke up to the fact that they didn't want to be a doctor, lawyer, or rocket scientist like their parents wanted them to, they were completely lost. See, this is such a big mistake because it makes us prioritize what other people think. And half the time, the opinions of the people that we give so much importance to don't even have the results that we want in life. And so when we switch majors and we job hop and we seek to find out what we really want to do, this happens. You realize that switching majors three times in two years causes your student loan debt to multiply because you're spending more years in school. All that job hopping can make you less credible to the next potential employer and that can mess with your money. Speaking of which, the second comparison trap that I see people falling into comes directly from the first one. As a comparison of titles pours into you caring about what other people think, it causes people to do something absolutely disgraceful. I call it stretching their pockets. It's a lot like stretching the truth. It's pretty much when someone flexes to act as if they have more money than they actually do. And this can be done in two main ways. One way is by verbally saying stuff like, yeah, I make good money. I made nine grand last month. I'm on track for making six figures this year. You might even have friends that come up trying to convince you that they're making all this money and it's all with the thought that it's going to impress you. And you know, just as well as I do, it rarely ends with anyone being impressed. It's more like a good for you. And the sad part about this is some people will even lie about how much money they make and it really shows when they try to keep up with their other friends. It shows when they try to have luxury cars and go to high-end restaurants having the latest everything, cell phones and all. But then the next thing you know, they're sitting down with you venting about how they're broke and how they can't hold on to money. You see what I'm saying? So there's two problems. One, you're telling me that you're making all this money and two, you have absolutely nothing to show for it. Which is bad because you're either stretching your pockets in the sense of exaggerating how much money you make, or you're literally stretching your pockets just so you can keep up with everyone else, which means you're mismanaging your money. That's exactly why what you do and where you went to school don't matter as much as we think they do. Because people still make bad decisions with their money to the point where they end up broke anyway. And this isn't the judge or anything, this is just to open your eyes to what's going on around you. So tell me this, bro. What's the point of making a lot of money or saying that you make a lot of money and you don't even know what to do with it? Those pockets just stretch and stretch until they break. You know what that means? Broke. 
And this is exactly why I created my frugal living series where I show you how to keep your expenses down and keep good discipline with your money. And that's why I also make videos showing you how to make more money and how to grow your money over time. These are fundamental modern survival skills that aren't taught in schools very often. And this actually pours into the third comparison trap. After making the mistake of comparing titles and stretching your pockets, eventually you develop a scarcity mindset, which ironically makes money burn a hole in your pocket, which is why I'm holding a burnt $100 bill on my thumbnail. It's okay, I'm not crazy, that's just the magic of editing, no actual dollars got hurt. Now from a success standpoint, trying to live up to what other people can do can take money away from us because we're so focused on them that we forget about what we can do. And something I talk about a lot on this channel is how we can all easily monetize on stuff that we're good at. It's just like what Einstein says in that one quote, everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its entire life believing it is stupid. That's fact. So what that does is it makes people feel like they're not enough. It makes them feel like we all can't win, like success is scarce, like money is scarce, like food and water are scarce. But in reality, all those things are overwhelmingly abundant. We can all win. When you build a scarcity mindset, you also start to develop a victim's mentality until you go into what I call, oh well mode. And you start saying stuff like, oh well, I'm in debt anyways. No turning back now. There's no need to actually improve my situation. It's much easier for me to just live the rest of my life like this. My life ain't so bad, you know? It's like saying, oh well, I didn't get that promotion. I guess I'll just completely give up and stop trying to level up just because I got turned down this one time. Life is all about making yourself better, overcoming challenges, and building relationships with people. But sometimes we get stuck on the wrong things. We get stuck on what someone else is doing. We get stuck on who we need to impress, and that causes people to lie, deceive, and flex, pretending to be something they're not. But when it's all said and done, that money done burnt a hole in their pocket, and their ego has burnt a hole in their soul. And when that happens, you can lose all drive to improve financially, all drive to improve your happiness. And you can lose the confidence that doesn't worry about what people think. And without that confidence and drive, there will always be the mistake of comparison, which pours from one generation to another in a never ending cycle. This is why I make videos and I hope you got a strong message from this. I want you to comment down below and tell me how you feel about this topic. And if you've gone through this before in your life, I'd love to know what action you took to improve your situation. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Stay cold.